If you want to know information about heart disease or how you can prevent heart disease, this video is for you. It's good to watch and it's very educative and that will help you what you can eat, what you can do to prevent it. Everything you will see it in this video. It's good to watch and you won't regret watching it. So just stay tuned and watch the video. Bye-bye. I think I should start with the heart. If we're going to talk about disease, because dis heart disease is still globally the biggest killer, why don't we start with heart? What things can we do to prevent or reverse heart disease? I'm sure you're all great students. You've all had it written down, but let me remind you. One of the most important things you can do to reverse heart disease is to have a healthy plant-based diet. I mentioned earlier that when I was doing cardiothoracic surgery up in Cambridge, Heavy work, really heavy work. We had to do three of these bypasses every single day. Enormously tiring. But what we had to do is open up somebody's chest, stop their heart, link it up to a big contraption, and then try and close them all up again. It was a big, big deal. The person would be in pain for months. They'd need rehabilitation. And then, at least, if it was a successful operation, they'd be alive. But evidence has shown us from years ago that just by changing your diet into a healthy plant-based diet, no meat, no milk, no refined sugar, those arteries that were closing down can now open up. Now, for me, even today, I've been doing this for many, many years. It's still miraculous to me that you can reverse one of the biggest problems in the world in terms of health just by changing your diet. You can get rid of doctors like me and you can just replace it with a healthy diet. That is amazing and I commend it to all of you. Some of you may have heart disease today. You may have an, op you may have an appointment to see a doctor in a few weeks or months. I can guarantee you, if you go on to a healthy plant-based diet today, by the time you see the doctor you may not even need an operation. I guarantee that's true. I've seen it with my own eyes. So that's heart disease. What about high blood pressure? If I was to ask you, do you know somebody with high blood pressure? Everybody would say yes. It's such a prevalent disease. Now, what few tips have I given you to reverse high blood pressure? Well, plant-based diet is absolutely good. You have to exercise. We've seen teeny skipping along this very stage, demonstrating how we have to exercise. It's brilliant. Water. I think water is one of the simplest things you can do to lower your blood pressure. Remember the example I gave you. If you were swimming in a lake, that's fine. If you were swimming in a lake of honey, that would be incredibly difficult because it's so thick. And that's what happens to your blood. If you don't have enough water in it, it becomes incredibly thick. You then have to use a lot of energy to push that blood round the system. Therefore, your blood pressure has to rise. Here's something, though. Going on from the plant-based diet, we said that greens do something quite remarkable in our arteries. They get the interior of our arteries to release a chemical called nitric oxide. That nitric oxide opens up the arteries all over. I told you nitric oxide is the active ingredient of Viagra. Okay, I know none of you have heard of it, none of you need to use it, but I can tell you when it comes to things like erectile dysfunction, rather than reaching for the pill, the best thing to do is reach for those greens. And let me remind you, gentlemen, because this is very important, if you have an episode of erectile dysfunction, you're at a high risk of having a heart attack or a stroke in the next five years. So rather than just going to the pill, start thinking about changing your lifestyles. Number three, cancer. What things have we said about cancer? Well, I always tell people, and I've been speaking to a lot of people in the clinics throughout the weeks, if you have cancer, there are certain things that you must do. Cancer loves sugar, you must eliminate refined sugar. Vitamin D is key. You must have high levels of vitamin D. I recommend 20,000 units per day. Along with that, vitamin C, high dose. I have seen with my very own eyes people on high doses of vitamin C 
having their cancer reversed. We cannot guarantee it. Don't, don't quote me. You can't guarantee it. But I have seen people on high doses of vitamin C have their cancer reversed. And remember, if you do have cancer, you must seek medical advice. I told you earlier during the week that those people who just say, I just want to go the natural route, often they don't survive. What you must do is seek medical attention and do the lifestyle, and then you have the best possible chance of surviving cancer. Medical attention alone um, does something, but it doesn't do everything. I remember when I used to be in the hospitals, the doctors would treat you for cancer and then allow you to eat the same foods that would cause cancer. That doesn't make any sense. So hospital treatment is good, but match that with lifestyle change, you've got a great chance of getting through, honestly. Now, what else can you do for cancer? I always say you should spice up your life. Spice up your life. Spices are really the keys to a healthy lifestyle too. They, they're like nature's natural drugs. The more spices you have in your life, the better your cells are going to be. Turmeric, most of us have heard of turmeric. It's a powerful antioxidant. And if you, if you take away the oxidation of your cells, it reduces the risk of cancer. Ginger is like it. It's also anti-inflammatory. Cinnamon is brilliant. Cinnamon, not only does it lower your blood sugar, which if you have low blood sugar, the cancer doesn't grow too well, but cinnamon is brilliant in terms of fighting off viruses. In fact, they discovered this over 100 years ago. The women who harvested the cinnamon bark never got measles, never got tuberculosis. And cinnamon, if you have anybody in your family who has any kind of viral illness, you give everyone in the household cinnamon, it's less likely that you'll get the infection. Cardamom is very interesting because it it actually makes you make more natural killer cells. They have a, a lethal name, but they do an awful lot of good. They're the white blood cells that defeat cancer. Diabetes, how do you beat diabetes? Definitely you need a healthy plant-based diet. But what else do we need to do? We should, every time you go for a meal and you're a diabetic, as you put your fork down, you should get up and go for a walk. Get up and go for a walk. What does that do? Well, as you're walking, you're using the big muscles in your body. Those muscles will absorb sugar very quickly. And so it will keep your blood sugar levels quite low. You then don't need to release a lot of insulin to deal with the sugar. And that means your cells can become insulin sensitive again. Insulin sensitivity is the opposite of diabetes. It can actually cure diabetes. I've told you quite boldly that anybody with type 2 diabetes does not have to live with it. Type 2 diabetes is completely reversible. Type 1 is more difficult, but type 2 completely reversible. So you do not have to live with it. Change your lifestyle and get rid of it. Okay, autoimmune disease. That was the last talk I did. That refers to all of these antibody diseases that are attacking different parts of the body. There are roughly four or five hundred of them. Wherever you've got tissues in your body, you will have an autoantibody if things go badly. And I must say, although I didn't talk about it, one of the biggest causes of infertility is autoimmune disease. Now, I know people go to the hospital for IVF treatment, absolutely, but rarely do they get to the bottom of what is the problem. And it's usually that you've got antibodies attacking your organs inside that makes it almost impossible to conceive. So everything you've heard me talk about with autoimmune disease, you need to apply if you want to get pregnant. Okay. Now, you see my details. I'm hoping that in nine months I'm going to get lots of communications of people telling me, yeah, we have a child. So it's possible, believe me. Now, some of the things, if you didn't come, if you weren't here the other day, some of the big things that you need to do to get rid of autoimmune disease is get rid of milk, because milk is one of the key factors that generates these antibodies. Deal with stress. 
Make sure you avoid refined sugar. Have high doses of vitamin D. If you do that, you have a great, great chance. A bit like a, a, a little boy called um, Bart Simpson. Don't have a cow man. Stay away from the milk. Okay. Now, this is increasingly a problem on this continent of Africa. Didn't used to be. Um, you go back 50 years, there was very little obesity on this continent in Africa. Now, with all of the imports of Western culture, including Western food and Western lifestyle, we're getting exactly the same problems that they get in the West. How do we defeat it? I always say, um, get rid of the white stuff. This is not a racist statement, folks. This is not a racist statement. I'm saying get rid of the white rice, white flour, white pasta, and of course that white substance, sugar. You know, sugar, if you look at it from afar, it looks a bit like heroin. And by the way, it activates exactly the same parts of your brain for heroin addiction. That's why giving up sugar can become so difficult. But remember, I did give you some help in overcoming sugar addiction. Remember the Dr. Chitty method? Named after some obscure doctor, you remember that? So let me, for those of you who don't remember, let me tell you, when that donut is calling out your name, the worst thing you can do is say, I can't eat the donut. Because if you do that, your, your brain will just desire it even more. What you must do is say, I will eat the donut, but I'll eat it in half an hour. At the same time, eat yourself an apple, now that apple will release sugar slowly into your bloodstream, slowly so that you don't get this insulin spike. And after half an hour, you'll have enough sugar in your system to overcome the desire for the donut. You're not looking convinced. Um, if at the end of the half an hour you still want that donut, do the same thing again. At the end of the day, you may have eaten five apples. That's okay, that's your five a day, right? But even if you fall off the wagon, even if you succumb to the donut, I guarantee you will eat it less frequently than if you didn't try the Dr. Chitty method. What does Dr. Chitty stand for? Don't resist it. Choose to have it, but delay it. Dr. Chitty. There you go. Now you'll remember my name, okay? That's the only reason why I did that for you. But seriously, sugar has been a serious business, especially on this continent. We used to be slaves for sugar, now we're slaves to sugar. We need to get rid of the sugar, absolutely. Now, we must not forget dementia. Okay, some of you understood what I was talking about. We must not forget dementia. Okay, I can hear one person, they've understood. Right, dementia, for me, is now one of the most feared diseases around. When I was younger, uh, a younger doctor, it used to be cancer. But now dementia, losing your memory, losing your personality, nobody wants that. It's a fearful thing. The good news is, and there is good news about dementia, it is a lifestyle disease. It is not random. Now you may have seen studies to say, well, there's a genetic makeup. There is. There are genes for dementia. But there are people who have the gene for dementia who don't get dementia. There are people who don't have the gene for dementia who get dementia. The biggest factors are lifestyle factors. So for example, you will know that if you have high blood pressure, that's a risk for dementia. If you're obese, if you're diabetic, and the biggest risk is long periods of stress in your adult life. If you do not know how to manage stress in your adult life, that is the biggest risk factor for dementia. So we're gonna to need to know how to manage the stress. We're also gonna to have to change our lives and make sure we have the right diet. There's been lots of studies done. On this continent, actually, there's been a Nigerian study which showed that the more berries you have in your diet, the less likely you are to have Alzheimer's. It's even more significant than that. They have showed that if you have dementia, early signs of dementia, you go onto a healthy diet, have lots of berries, you can reverse up to 90% of the symptoms. Now maybe you've never heard that before. Because most people think, once I've got dementia, it's just a long road down to ruin. That's not true. 
if you are diagnosed and you change your lifestyle, you can reverse up to 90% of the symptoms of dementia. Talking about stress, we spoke a little bit about depression and, I, and anxiety and stress. What, what, what's, what little signs can I give you to, to help? Well, remember what we said. There are triggers for depression. There are triggers for stress. And the big ones are debt, divorce, disease, and death. Now, we can't avoid some of them, but when they come to us, the best thing to do is to not hide away and keep it to yourself. The best thing to do is to get help quickly. The quicker we get help, the quicker we understand that we're not alone, that other people are going through exactly the same thing, the quicker we can cure ourselves or, or head off depression. What else do we need to do? If you're depressed, you might find it difficult, but one of the ways to break that cycle of depression is to get into some physical activity, whether it's going for a walk, a run, a swim, whatever. Maybe you need somebody to encourage you to do it, but it will break that cycle of depression quicker than just about anything. The next thing you can do is do something even if it's small, for somebody else. That sounds strange, you're, you're depressed, why am I gonna do something for somebody else? Well, we have shown through scientific endeavor that by doing even a small thing for someone else, it takes your mind off of yourself. And that can break that cycle of that spiral of self-thought. So the more you can do for somebody else, even if you don't feel like it, Think of it as if you're doing something for yourself when you're doing something for somebody else. Being kind to somebody else is actually being kind to yourself. What else? I mean, we have to know how to heal from depression, and we've talked about it a lot. Forgiveness. The quicker we can start to forgive ourselves, forgive others, if you're able to do that, it is a quicker release from the grips of depression and stress. Every study I've seen in the last 10 years has an element, has an element of letting go of past trauma, of past hurt. The quicker we're able to do that, the greater the chance we're gonna be free from depression. And we want to be free from depression. Because in fact, even at the heart of most of these diseases that I've been talking about, is a level of stress. Stress makes every disease worse. It doesn't improve one disease. Right, so, in fact, we know that disease is what? Dis-ease. So if you want to get rid of disease, we're going to have to start to be at ease with ourselves. We can only do that if we learn to forgive, if we learn to let go.